But really what we were looking at here was the seasonality of wasting prevalence at the country level using satellite data. So we're trying to figure out about how that open source, freely available geospatial data could be used to try and look at those uh, seasonal patterns. First of all, we can even identify those seasonal patterns in, in these data sets. Uh, so Sophan and I are presenting it, but there was a, a various there's loads of different people involved, which is all listed at the end. Um, We'll bring all the names out because we've not got much time. Uh, so the original aim then was to look at can monthly wasting values be adjusted for seasonal effects. Um, so essentially what we're looking at here is that we have nutrition data that say the Joint Malnutrition Estimation Team at UNICEF has access to, but is often collected on a, it's collected during a year, but the data that we were getting from them was like a window. So instead of it saying in 2004 in January, we collected this data, this is what wasting looked like, often it would be 2004, January to May, and there'd be a five month window, and then you just get the wasting scores for that. And that would be it. So we need a bit more information. That. So some of the data that's available um, is quite limited. So it does prevent a lot of this um, work being done as easily as, as, it, as it could be. So that's partly why we were looking at the monthly wasting values um, and seeing whether we could establish those from, from open source data. Um, so the original data that we're going to use, the smart surveys from the JME that are sort of conducted within countries, we couldn't use those um, because for two main reasons. The first being that as I said, the collection windows, so we could switch between a single month to five, six, seven months in some countries. So it's difficult to establish seasonality if you don't know quite when in the year the data is collected. And the other um, aspect was the spatial information wasn't that detailed. We needed something a little bit, not, we don't necessarily need GPS, but we need something that, that embeds the, the data within a country in a particular area so we can link it to the spatial data sets of the climate data that we use. So we did end up using the demographic health survey as a placeholder for now, just to sort of establish these, these methodologies. So we kind of adapted the aim and the objectives as the, as the project um, progressed to looking at what would wasting prevalence have been had it been measured in a different month of that year. So we're interested in that cycle. And it's not about the month, really, because the months are when the data is collected, but it's more about the shifting patterns of, say, the climate and um, the temperatures and all that is linking into food availability and also food access. So those are the two things really that we were focusing on, but we're using the monthly data to help establish those, uh, those seasonal cycles. So we have two main uh, objectives. The first was to explore whether seasonal variability of the waste and prevalence. So if there is one, can we find it? Can we see it? Can it be uh, identified in the available data that we have? And also to investigate So I've got a cold, I'm about to say so. <laughs> to investigate if monthly wasting prevalences can be estimated from a publicly available data as well. So looking at each individual month, and if there isn't a piece of data collected in that month, can we come up with an estimation of what, what we think it would be given the previous months of that, uh, the previous months in other years that we've got measures for, and also the, the months leading up to or after um, that particular month when there's been data collected. So trying to gap fill using this type of modeling approach. So the shortlisting of the countries, we worked on four uh, during the project. These were Ethiopia, Burkina Faso, Nigeria, and Bangladesh. So the shortlisting was actually done using the JME data. Um, and we were looking for uh, the red lines on these graphs are the uh, national wasting scores. The black lines are then sub, sub regional within the country. Scores. What we were looking for was a nice cloud of black lines across these these plots um, to to see that we've got multiple years and we've got multiple sort of sub national data sets across uh, across those years. Um, so we used the JME data set to um, shortlist those countries, but then obviously later on we had to switch to the DHS because of various issues with the, the JME data, which we'll, we, we can discuss later. Um, but just as, as well as one of the other outcomes from the project, there is a website that all of this information is, is there. So all the countries within the smart surveys that the JME team have, they're all on this the link to go in and look at what the data availability looks like.
So we wanted to look at the seasonality and wasting prevalence and also the weight for height Z scores. Um, the original GME data was used to shortlist, but then we had to switch to, to DHS. Um, so the DHS data used to establish these methodological approaches. Um, we have since started working on a separate little project, which is at the national level. We're using the JME data sets again, which this panel mentioned at the end. Um, so in terms of DHS data availability, this is, the, this is what we, we were working on for these four countries. We've got the, the different years. And what we were really looking for was for each country, we want for every month, we want more than one um, um, data set. So we want, so January here, we've got two, February, we've got two as well. So that means that we can look at January, but two different time points in, in a January with wasting uh, information. And some of the months we've got three as well. So it means that we can start to look into what the cycle looks like in each, each year, because we've got multiple uh, months of that year. But it also means when we've got a gap here, we can start to think about can we predict what this value would be in 2007 or 2011, given what we can see in the previous January, and also what we can see in months leading up to January in other years where we, where we have data for. So in terms of Bangladesh, we had plenty of uh, years of data, plenty of months. Burkina Faso, it was limited. One of the data sets, it looked like we had three. One of the data sets, there was various issues with it. Ethiopia and Nigeria, pretty good. Um, and they're actually quite an, an interesting example here because it gives us Bangladesh, essentially, what can we do when we've got a lot of good data? Ethiopia, Nigeria, what's possible when we've got limited amounts of information? Because we've got some months where there's literally no, there's never been a, a wasting um, or there's never been a survey conducted in January across the DHS for Ethiopia and Nigeria. So to collect the covariates, we had a rapid review. Um, we didn't have time for a full systematic review, so that was Geraldine was um, was running that with with Nish Nishmeet. So looking into um, identifying a long list of potential variables, both geospatial and non uh, geospatial variables that are related to child waste. We then took that long list, extracted them from the DHS survey, and also looked at open source geospatial databases. We'll talk about what that means in a, in a couple of slides. The DHS data, we, we dropped covariates if they weren't available in each year of the survey, because we wanted it to be applicable across different years. The covariates had high levels of correlation with other covariates, so there's multicollinearity, so they were deemed more suitable. So we took, if there was two variables, both related to the waste, but those two variables were also highly correlated together. We would take the one that was more had the higher correlation with waste, and we drop um, the other uh, variable from the model. Um, if they didn't appear in all countries, we dropped them. And if variables had a high number of missing values, as well, they were also dropped. Um, just to say as well, the DHS because we're positioning the DHS surveys within a country and then linking it to these geospatial data sets. The DHS does have a GPS point for each of the villages, but it has been repositioned for security and, and, and various different reasons. So just this is just really to say that we've actually done the models in both the original GPS points, and we've also then moved them back to um, the most likely setting. So where there's actually physically evidence of a settlement, and when we've run the, the extractions again at, at that level. So we have experimented with both of these um, approaches. In terms of the geospatial variables we've used, we've taken a crop vegetation condition uh, proxy using the normalized difference vegetation index, basically a measure of greenness from, from satellite imagery. And that's available for 20 year time point. We've got rainfall, we've got soil moisture, land, temp land surface temperature, and also a drought index. Now, one of the one of the limitations with geospatial data is that the, the spatial resolution. So the, the NDVI was selected on the fact that it's very high resolution, 250 meters, whereas the other ones are at five kilometers and above. So that means you've got very big pixels, which means often you'll get multiple um, villages, multiple clusters falling in the same pixel. So you could end up with very different wasting um, outcomes but falling in the same pixel. And that's just because of the size of these, these pixels. But this is the, the best data that's available at the moment. So there is certainly a limit to what the geospatial data can, can be used for and can tell us when we're looking at very localized um, wasting scores, well, as we've done here. So to process this, what we've actually done is taken each of the pixels and then we've aggregated them up to the cluster level. So we've actually come up with like a mean and average for, for each of those DHS clusters. 
For most of the data, we then created Z scores. So we actually looked at these long-term averages of what, say, the rainfall would be. And then we've taken for that particular time point, we'll take, say, for May 2008. We're looking at how May 2008 deviates from a long-term average for May in that particular um, case. So if the rainfall is particularly high or particularly low for, for that month, then it's, it, we will have that in the Z score. So it show that there is a deviation from the long-term average here. And we've done that for the month of the survey. We've also done that for the month of the survey and the month previous. And we also did it for the month of the survey and the two months previous. So we have tried to be in some of that lag effect of, um, of climatic impacts. There. But we've only managed, because of data processing, um, limitations, we've only managed to do sort of two months leading up to when the survey was conducted. Uh, so there's still additional improvements that could be made in, in the future there. Um, the, stand, the precipitation uh, drought index essentially is a standardized approach. So we've categorized that and we were really looking for the extremely wet and the extremely dry periods again. There. So that's what we were um, anticipating that was to be used for as well. Uh, right, and I'll stop there. So Han, do you want to? So Han's going to do the chat of the modelling because he's the he's the senior data scientist at um, Edinburgh University who helped with these models. Great, thanks, thanks, Kerry. So I'll quickly walk you through the the modelling that we did and the results uh, that we got from the modelling. And as Kerry pointed out, we have quite a granular level data here, so child level data where for each child we know certain parameters, their household parameters and their cluster level parameters. And we wanted to use this data to answer basically two questions. First of all, to see if there is seasonality present in the wasting prevalence that we see in the data. And uh, also, can we correct for that wasting or not? So that's why we have two separate models that we, that we worked on, mostly focusing on the individual level model and then focusing on the aggregate level model, which, as Gary pointed out, we have a follow-on project where we are exploring a bit more on, on that front. So the individual level model, as I mentioned, you will have child level, household level, cluster level features. But additionally, we included some cluster level variation, month specific variation and year specific variation in there, just to account for the fact that if we cannot explain whether a child will be will have wasting or not based on those features, and then we have certain other variables which can capture those effects and we can analyze what are those effects uh, in, the, in the data. And that is individual level model. And in the aggregate level model, we don't look at whether one particular child will be suffering from wasting or not, but we try to capture whether an area, what is the prevalence of wasting will be in, the, in that area. And one quick point here is that in the individual level model, we fitted two separate lines of model with or without the cluster level covariates. And the, the reason for doing that was, that, as Gary pointed out, the cluster level feature that we are saying, it requires adjusting because we don't know the exact location of places. The idea was that can fit the model without the information. And if we include that information after the area has been shifted and geospatial uh, characteristics have been captured, does it improve the performance of the model or not? And whether the cluster level feature that we have, both spatiotemporal feature in this context, can it explain some of the seasonality that we see in the data or not, if the seasonality is indeed present in the data? Can you take us to the next slide, Gary? So as I mentioned, the individual level model, it's a simple mixed effect model where we have fixed effect and random effect. And we have fixed effect for the indiv uh, individual child level features where you have the birth order, breastfeeding duration, age of child, sex of child, and other features that can be extracted. And we have also the household level features, uh, quite a few of those, for the example, the occupation of mother, the number of women in the household, their literacy, wealth index and other things. We have the month level variation, as I mentioned, we captured it as a um, fixed effect in the data. And also we have year level variation, which we capture as a fixed effect in the data as well. Now we experimented with slightly that 
we can have features that can explain the yield but we realize that probably it is okay to capture it just as a fixed effect on its own without being explained by respective features and towards the end we have the cluster level features which is captured as a random effect because we have quite a few clusters and one of the issues there is that all we don't although a same cluster can be repeated over multiple times we don't have that information so even if the same cluster data is collected over multiple years they are all sort of secure and we don't know that information so that's why we suggested using a random uh, effect for that feature and towards the very left we have the so all of this effect is explaining the the childhood wasting and for that we took three different representation of wasting one is a continuous scale feature which is the the z-score and higher z-score is better so you are not uh, wasted but additionally uh, we wanted to check if we change the feature to a binary feature of wasting or severe wasting and get a from wrong to defined by less than two sigma less than three sigma on the on the left hand tail end if we change that representation does the wasting or the coefficient that we get changed or not and what we saw is that they don't really change so it's quite a stable model that we have and if we click the button um, Gary we have another I think item on the slide yes and as I mentioned so this is the full model uh, actually collection of models because you are changing the way you are representing the wasting and which features you're including additionally all this model was fitted with the geospatial data and additionally then up now the next round to see it with without the special data sorry and with the special data to see if that can explain things better or not and can it capture the seasonality if you move to the next slide gary so this is the result sort of we we get and this is the forest plot i'm pretty sure everyone is familiar with where if you are on the right hand side you are better off if you're on the left hand side you are worse off in terms of wasting and this variable is the continuous scale variable so the right hand side is indeed better and left hand side is uh, indeed indeed worse here and here we are showing the coefficients and of course if the if the red line doesn't overlap with the dotted line then those uh, coefficients are significant and we can try to interpret why they are significant in this context so this is the data from bangladesh and if you click on the button um, carry just wanted to highlight yeah highlight the, the orange highlight here which shows for example the effect of wealth quintile and what we observed is that if you are from a richer background then you are better off in, in, the, in the context of wasting and as i mentioned the left hand model is showing the continuous valued um, data and the right hand side is showing the binarized data where we're looking at moderate and severe deprivation now here things change a bit because you binarize the data yeah the not being wasted is zero and being wasted is one so the the direction changes so if you're on the right side you are worse if you're on the left side you are you are better but what we observe is that the the coefficient also to change direction obviously the significance doesn't change that much so basically what you see with the continuous scale data you observe similar thing in the in the binary data as well for wasting and uh, severe wasting and the example i've shown here is the wealth quintile where we show a natural progression that if you are from a visual background you are better off in terms, in terms of wasting if you click another button carry We've got like five more minutes, guys. Gary, yeah. five more minutes, if possible. If you quickly go back, yeah, thanks. So, what we immediately wanted to observe is that, yeah, thanks, Gary. Whether there is seasonality present in the data or not, and the highlighted area in yellow shows the seasonality present in the data. So, with respect to a certain month, if you look at another month, you see the coefficient is significant, and that is what we observed in the Bangladesh data shown in the highlighted area. So. Uh, if you go to the next slide, can you just to quickly wrap up? What we observed is that uh, in terms of predicting whether a child will be wasted or not, the model performs quite poorly. And that's another reason we went to the second model, which looks at the monthly prevalence, not the individual uh, level data. What we observed is that also if you introduce special data, 
the model performance becomes better. And for example, the, the um, seasonal variation in Ethiopia and Nigeria can be explained by the SPI index and extreme drought is related to the wasting or severe wasting in those two countries. We also show that the seasonality is present in the data. It is very clear in Bangladesh and Nigeria, not too clear in Ethiopia, but there is a sign of it. And also in terms of age, what we usually observe is that if you are of lower age, then you have better, more chance of being wasted. And as you grow older, you have less chance of uh, suffering from wasting. But just to quickly bring in Gary, we observe something different in Bangladesh. And Gary, can you explain that, please? Yeah, so we had, a, this comes back to that overall data sets as well. Um, the, the, so the bottom point here um, is that there's a tendency for the nutrition experts that we were working with from UNICEF to say that at year zero, so on this one here, this is for Bangladesh, at year zero, you expect to see uh, during breastfeeding wasting to be um, slightly lower than um, year one. So it goes up after basically weaning, essentially, but then after that point, it goes down to all, it should go down, or it's expected to go down to almost nothing, which is what we were getting the message from. So the two boxes that are highlighted here are showing that that's not what's happening in these two things. Um, so we're getting actually a, it starts lower, it goes up, it goes down, but then it goes back up again, which was unexpected for the um, nutritionists in uh, at UNICEF. Um, and we then had quite a lot of discussion and, and checks of models. And the, the reason why we're highlighting it is that it's not an error. This is actually measured in the Bangladesh data. The JME team were assuming that it is an error in terms of the data collection. And the reason why that's relevant is that the joint malnutrition estimation data sets that we get from UNICEF and from the World Health Organization, they're not measured data that's been released to uh, researchers. They're actually adapted and changed based on expert opinion. So when the data comes in, they're cleaned and they're processed. And we can see that they've been cleaned and processed, but we don't know how and who's made those decisions. So it's quite interesting that there's an assumption that the data is wrong because it's not following the patterns expected. And if that's also happening in the JME data, then it's quite difficult for the models um, like the ones that we've created to actually use that type of data because the data has essentially already been smoothed and changed and adapted. And it's not entirely clear to say Sohan and I how that's um, happened. And if it is based on the fact that people are assuming that it, it kind of goes up slightly into year one and then it just goes down to almost zero by the end of the, um, the fifth year, uh, and that isn't the case, then it, it potentially is masking what's going on on the ground. So there's... We, we never got to the bottom of that, but it was an interesting little outcome that that, um, that came out of the, the project. So, Han, do you want to just finish this one, or do you want me yeah. to talk about that one? Yeah, okay. Well, yeah, yeah, just probably one minute since we're out of time. So, the uh, the individual level model, we are trying to see, can we explain seasonality? And in the aggregate level model, we were trying to see, can we capture the prevalence of uh, the waste in, in certain months? And that was the main correction factor for the project that if we know within a year certain months of prevalence has occurred uh, in terms of wasting can we fill the gap with the other months so that's a very similar model it's a linear model where we're explaining the prevalence in terms of how much it varies monthly how much it varies yearly and how much it varies at the cluster level and the figure that you are seeing here is that the rate shows the observed prevalence i think data is for bangladesh again and the blue shows that what is the estimate that we get after fitting a model in those years? So the red lines, of course, don't cover the full year, and each of the orange band is one year. So they don't cover the full year. So it is certain months in the year where the data is collected from, and the blue lines where we are sort of putting or filling the gap in the, in the data. And as you can see that the model performs quite well in terms of gauging the prevalence in sort of Bangladesh quite well, in the other countries not so well, and that is the follow-on project that we are working on from this data, which is more at level, not individual, can we uh, perform better in terms of correcting for the prevalence in other months which are not present uh, in the data. I think that's where I can stop and hand it yep. over to Gary again. Thanks, Thanks yeah, so effectively what you're showing is that if we take out all other variables and we just try and predict prevalence using the month and the year of the survey with then a, a, random, a random effect for cluster, we actually do quite a good job, which suggests that 
because this is a lot, this is months and years, then there is something going on with um, seasonality. It's just some of the geospatial data that we've got isn't coming through the models. And that's likely to be down to the, the spatial resolution of those those geospatial data sets as well. So there's, there's more to be done um, to, to understand this um, in more depth. Um, so I think then, so just to conclude then, um, let's see, let's see. Models show that the wasting, severe wasting and wasting Z scores vary. They do may vary by month. So there is clearly seasonality in um, each of these uh, variables. And they're also varying uh, seasonally. It does appear to be wasting seasonally in countries, in all the countries, uh, but getting to it is quite difficult using the data that we, we have available. That's where the model gets quite complex. Um, the Bangladesh models were able to identify much better because there's just more data um, available across the years and across the months. And we could actually predict values on a monthly basis quite successfully. Um, the patterns are linked to prevailing harvest times in each country as well. So one thing there to do is to start looking into all lag times, looking into the temperatures and things as well. Um, since we've finished this work, we've actually stopped using the NDVI and we've started looking at things like um, the soil moisture as well and whether that helps with looking at length of growing period rather than just looking at the greenness of the, the crops, which um, potentially will have bigger impact. Um, and in particular, drought, extreme drought was a significant predictor with um, waste in Ethiopia and Nigeria, where water is a limiting factor in that rain fed agriculture. But obviously, that's not a problem in, in Bangladesh as much as, as flooding is. That's why. Uh, so, we are seeing some signals coming out, and there is some potential and, and possibilities for using this, um, these, these uh, geospatial data sets. Um, I think I'm just happy to speak to you just a few recommended next steps as well as to what to do. So given it was a short project, um, we want to look into the GME database again. So looking at that at the moment, we've got a, a different version that we started with in season one. So we're looking into that at the moment, with Sultan and I. Um, we need to go back over those proxy measures as well and think a little bit more. NDVI is not related to anything directly. So we start, we've started to look into how we could think about what it means for length of growing period and harvest times and things. Um, I think the other one to look at as well was that we didn't really consider any food access. We do have the ability to look at, say, travel time to the markets and things, but we didn't have any market location information for these uh, countries that we rely on. So we've only looked at food production-related issues and not about food access. 